Hello. This lecture will talk about a more complicated case, on bearing capacity of shallow foundations using Terzaghi theory. And an Excel spreadsheet will be provided in the comment section. If you don't know, what Terzaghi theory is, please refer to my previous video. My previous video has covered the content of soil shear failures, ultimate bearing capacity, and Terzaghi theory which examples in Excel spreadsheets. So remember to subscribe to my channel. And more information related to civil engineering, structural engineering, and foundation will be provided. In this video, I will show how to use the spreadsheet to calculate a more complicated case of bearing capacity. Refer to Cockwit uh, and Carisol, J. 1948. Tables for the calculation of passive pressure, active pressure, and bearing capacity of foundations. This is the Terzaghi theory formula used to calculate the bearing capacity of soil. For some basic information related to Terzaghi theory formula, you can refer to my previous video. So please subscribe to my channel. Let's start. In this lecture, I will demonstrate a more complicated example bearing capacity. That footing includes moment in both direction and shear force acting on footing. Also, this footing is with angle of foundation base tilt and there is slope in front of foundation. First, let me introduce some concepts on how these changes affect the Terzaghi theory equation. If moment is applied on footing, an effective area method, which you can refer to Meyerhoff, 1953, can be used to calculate the equivalent area of foundation. After considering the effect of moment, it will reduce the size of footing. According to the value of eccentricity, by length of footing minus two times of eccentricity, this figure shows the effective area method used, which the effective width and length of footing is minus two times the eccentricity to adjust the effect due to shear force or axial force with angle. Inclination factor needs to be calculated. The reduction of ultimate bearing capacity depends on the vertical load and shear force, with a larger value of shear force and smaller value of vertical force. A larger reduction of ultimate bearing capacity. This factor will affect the component of surcharge and soil weight in the Terzaghi theory equation. To consider the effect of inclination of the foundation base, tilt factor accounts for it and it affects this component which is the passive earth pressure to resist to shear. To consider the effect of sloping inclination in front of footing, ground sloping factor will account for it and it will affect all these three components in the Terzaghi theory equation. If you have any problems, you can refer to my previous video. In this case, the distance of foundation edge to the slope is a factor affecting ultimate bearing capacity. The relationship between distance and ultimate bearing capacity is proportional. It means it is needed to calculate the ultimate bearing capacity in sloping ground. Ultimate bearing capacity in level ground, which is zero degree in slope inclination, and the y-intercept, and by the interpolation, it can get the value of ultimate bearing capacity. It seems that the calculation is complicated. Don't worry. An Excel spreadsheet is provided and pinned in the comment section. You can download it. In this video, I will use this Excel spreadsheet to demonstrate an example. For some basic information related to Terzaghi theory, you can refer to my previous video. I will continue to provide more information on structural design and foundation design information. So please subscribe to my channel. I will use the example of my previous video and make some modifications on it. First, moment is added on footing, which is 80 k and m along b, and 50 k and m along l while the axial load remains the same as in the previous video example. Also, 50 k in shear force is added on the footing. There is also a 30 degree slope in front of the footing, which is 5 m distance from the edge of the footing. The footing base is slightly rotated with 5 degrees to the horizontal. In plan view, the load is applied like this. Let's start to calculate using the Excel spreadsheet. I already provided it in the comment section. If you want to have a try, you can download it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. First, my previous video calculated the required area of footing is 15mx 15m. Let's try from this size. For moment along B, we type 80 and moment along L. We type 50. The Excel spreadsheet calculates the eccentricity along B and L for us. As I use the effective area method to account for the effect of the moment, the value of eccentricity can help me to calculate the effective width and length B and L, which is minus 2 times eccentricity. And we can get the value of B 
and L, here. As I use the effective area method, I go to part B and go here, which is to calculate the bearing pressure due to the axial load, after considering the effect of moment. It means with 80k and m moment along B and 50k and m moment along L, when axial load 667k n is applied on a 15 mx 15 m footing, the bearing pressure is 392 k in per meter square. With factor of safety equals 3, the ultimate bearing capacity needs to be greater than 392 k in per meter square times 3, which is 1176 k in per meter square. Go here. Type B which means the below calculation is going to use effective width and length to calculate instead of using original width and length. If you type A, which uses the original width and length, the bearing pressure of footing should refer to part A. In this lecture, I used an effective area method. The soil properties keep the same as the previous example. For angle of slope in front of foundation, as it is a linear relationship of distance between footing and slope and ultimate bearing pressure, it needs to first calculate the ultimate bearing pressure and slope equals zero degree. Type zero here. The footing base is slightly rotated with five degrees to the horizontal. Type 5 here, for resultant load. There is a 50k in horizontal load applied on footing. Type 50 here, surcharge is the same as the previous example, and the ultimate bearing capacity is obtained. The bearing pressure is in here which means the factor of safety does not greater 3 and it is not okay. But I continue my calculation first to show all steps of calculation. Then, it is required to obtain the bearing capacity at sloping ground. Click this sheet. In here, Type 30 and the ultimate bearing capacity is obtained at sloping ground. The other calculation data is automatically filled which is the same as the previous sheet. Then go to this sheet which is the interpolation of ultimate bearing capacity at a distance from the slope. The ultimate bearing capacity of level ground and slope ground is automatically filled. Which I have calculated before. For slope ground, it refers to this sheet and for level ground, it refers to this and the relationship between them is shown as this figure. Type 5 here is the footing is 5m in front of the slope. If factor of safety equals 3 is applied, the allowable bearing pressure is less than the applied pressure, which means it is not okay and needs to redesign it. Now, the footing size is changed to 2m x 2m. Type 2 here and also type 2 here. Ultimate bearing capacity of level ground and slope ground is calculated. Go to the interpolation sheet, the allowable bearing pressure is 252 k and m, which is greater than the applied pressure, which is 205 k and m. It mean the size of 2 mx 2 m is okay without having bearing shear failure. Hope you understand my lecture. Thank you for watching. I will continue to provide more information on structural design and foundation design information. So please subscribe to my channel.